Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash, and in today's very short video, I wanted to look at a common problem that seems to be coming up a lot lately in my one-to-one -one lessons with people, and that is clipping when recording audio. It seems that a lot of people still don't realise that in this day and age, there is no good reason why you should be losing parts of your signal when it goes above the zero dB line. This may manifest in when recording a vocalist. Perhaps you've set the overall level of their microphone so that for most of their performance, everything's hunky-dory. But at a moment of particularly impassioned emotion, perhaps they really raised the roof on their levels and it went above the zero dB line. Or perhaps when recording direct audio out on drum machines at a moment of big long decays on the kicks, the toms, and a bit of saturation, once again the signal was too hot and it went above the zero dB line. This can be indicated by the telltale signs of when looking at the signal, that instead of it having a full breadth, it sort of flatlines, and that means that it's reached the ceiling of zero dBs and captured no more. Now, the way that I'm going to fix this for you is a very tiny little adjustment to your settings in Bitwig, but it will prevent you from ever again losing parts of your signal when inadvertently you go above the zero dB line. This is very helpful for if you're just jamming with friends, perhaps you've got the guitar, the bass, you're recording some drums and a vocal, and you want to make sure that you're not having to constantly adjust the levels, and if perhaps you start to increase collectively your dynamic range to a point where you all go over zero dB, there's no need for you to lose that signal. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I have my MacBook Pro microphone set as the input device for Bitwig, and I'm going to be intentionally recording a clap that is too hot. I am going to be recording a clap far too loud, far too close to the microphone on here. So let's just do one quick run through of that. If I zoom in, you'll be able to see that that sound, particularly the beginning of it, was uh, too hot. You can see here 22.7 decibels too hot. So that's 22.7 decibels. It went over zero, creating a sort of digital clipping. If I were to try and bring the volume down on this, you'll see that while I can make it quieter, we've lost a large percentage of the audio signal. It just simply wasn't captured because it was too loud. The reason why this is, is because of the fact that Bitwig or Ableton or Logic is recording at 24-bit depth. If you go to the settings and under recording here, you can see that we have the option to change not just the recording, but also the bounce resolution. If I were to change this now to 32-bit float, and I'm going to put this back to just regular 0 dB gain, I'm going to record another clap now, and the only difference will be that I've changed the bit depth of recording. There we go, a nice, very loud one there. Let's just copy this. Okay, so this is our 24-bit recording, and this is our 32-bit. You can see that both of them have that same telltale sign of having lost uh, signal because of going above zero. However, as I now highlight both of these and bring the volume down in the same way as I demonstrated with just the 24-bit, you'll notice that while this one is now 6 dBs quieter, we've got nothing above it, that straight line. This 32-bit one is now showing a little part of the signal that we couldn't see before. And as I start to bring this down, you'll see that this 32-bit has actually managed to keep a huge amount of information that had just been removed from this recording. Now, this is because of the fact that uh, when recording to 24-bit, you end up with 144.5 decibels of dynamic range, which means all the way from minus infinity to plus 100, or should I say, from minus infinity plus 144.5 dB, you're going to be fine. But if it goes above that threshold, it's not capable of recording that, and it's simply going to be clipped out. However, recording at 32-bit float has a dynamic range of 1,528 decibels, which may sound like a lot, sure, but it is an unfathomably large number. Scientists estimate that the largest, uh, or the, the loudest sound to have ever been experienced on Earth was in 1878 or something on an island in Indonesia called Krakatoa, when a volcano erupted. And it was only 310 decibels, and it was estimated to have been heard around the world. And it was that loud that it shook ships. It was an incredibly loud, loud sound. So when recording in 32-bit depth, 32-bit float, you're sort of guaranteed that there's no way you're ever going to lose the signal. Obviously, the file size is bigger. 
But when you're recording an artist, you're recording a guitarist or a singer, or you're even just jamming with friends, setting this to 32-bit float means that you are saving yourself the heart-wrenching nonsense situation of losing any of your signal, because you can always bring it down quiet enough. Um, this is a total game changer. One thing that this was also important to note is that you can do it with bounce resolution as well. So right here I've got a synth, it's, I'm going to mute it because it's too loud. You can see that this synth is currently clipping at minus 20 or 25 dB here. If I were to bounce that, let's duplicate it once, I'm going to bounce this. You can see that now if I bounce this second one at 32 bit float, and we bring the volumes of these both down, the one on the left has just clipped, whereas the one on the right has kept all of that resolution, which is just total game changer. This allows you to use some really hot signals with saturators, distortion, and all that good jazz. And so long as you make sure to not export your file, which when you do, you know, likely you're going to be doing, say, export audio and the, uh, say you're recording to, to WAV, if you were to export it at 32-bit float, you're going to be fine. But if you export it at 24 or 16, this will then clip. You're going to run into the same issue there. So just make sure that when you're actually exporting things, you're not running them off too hot. But when you're working in this realm, there's no real number that's too hot for you to be recording at. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today. But I do hope that this video was useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell too to keep up to date with all of my future videos. If you particularly like me, and would like to take your support a step further, then I would love if you would consider becoming a member of my music production and creative mindset community, Tash Tribe, the link to which will be in the description down below. But in the meantime, happy Tuesday, and happy creating.